Oh yeah. So <laughs> re remember Danny when uh I was talking to you about um this guy uh, that has a Twitter account fake Charlie Whitey. <laughs> Pull it up cuz this is brilliant. I can do this. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Let me get some uh <laughs> So I guess yesterday or or, uh, or right now I guess uh, there's some sort of an auction going with some big uh, F1 names in it like Crofties presenting. Um, I think I can see some people. Anyway, um, so, yeah, look up uh, <laughs> a person fake like like not real fake Ch yeah, yeah fake Charlie Whiting that one. Yeah, so pull up his account and I just want <laughs> it looks so real though. Yeah, no, I I want to I want to like pull something out like go down a little bit go down yeah, a yeah, little yeah. bit. A little bit more. Okay, here, 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 here. Up. So he says, <laughs> I, so fake Charlie Whiting on Twitter says, I asked Susie Perry to introduce me to Claire Williams. She said, put your tongue back in your mouth. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> She's so hot, though. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> She's so hot. <laughs> I don't even know. Claire Williams. Oh, my God. She's a pretty gal. Is she, she a race car driver? She is. She, uh, more than that, she is the team principal of one of the most, uh, most historied teams in formula one right so now so she is uh a driver and whatever you no no, no she's, she's not a driver she's, she's not a driver she's like the boss she's the, she's the boss. boss she's the boss oh, okay. that's a boss woman okay. boss woman can you imagine but like having that as your boss woman <laughs> boss woman shows up at your office and says all right well it's, it's time to go we gotta do it i'd be like yeah well, yeah i'll do that whatever you, you want yeah. <laughs> whatever you want i'm, I'm down I'm game she, I'm ready. she took over for her dad there yeah at, oh. at williams her, her dad actually is uh, is is Frank, top top Frank notch Williams? guy, top guy. He top he, guy, top sh well, top shelf sort yeah, of dude. Yeah, top shelf kind of guy. <laughs> but he 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 basically took this Formula One team that him and his buddy essentially started. Yeah, uh, back in the seventies, I believe, and built it from the ground up. And at one point, they were the most dominant team in Formula One for a little while. So props to them. They're not anywhere near that now. They right. They, but they built some sort of legacy. Well, or, or it's history. it's safe to say that right now their their best days are not these days. <laughs> but they're climbing up. They're climbing up. They're Mine doing pretty the good. Toronto Maple Leafs. They're getting there. They're getting there. They're, they're getting, getting there. there. Yeah, yeah. Not mine. Not my Leafs. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I actually really wanted to pull up uh, from Twitter. And actually, uh, Mike, you're gonna get yeah, go back to the logo. Okay. Um, the, okay. The, this guy, uh, uh, Tobias Gruner. I don't know how to pronounce his name properly. Tobias, he, he writes for um, the German magazine Automotor und Sport. Uh, I guess it's uh, whatever. It's a car magazine from Germany. And he says that Alonso came very close to a 2014, uh, or sorry, 2015 Porsche Le Mans drive. Uh, but apparently the deal was uh, prohibited by Honda Vito. That sounded like sorcery to me. So yeah, it sounds like a for it. secret. It sounds like some sort of secret deal to me. Well, See, he used to drive years ago. He drove for Honda. Okay, up to whatever oh seven when they were still in the sport. Yeah. So uh, the uh, his champions his, his his only championships. Uh, this guy Fernando Alonso. He's yeah. he's most famous for being a Ferrari driver. Okay, and and yeah. he is he, he's exiting Ferrari this year. He's driving not for Ferrari but for McLaren. Mm. Um. Honda, McLaren Honda, but um, he's most known for being the top uh, Ferrari driver for the past, uh, what, like five years before that or something like that? The leader of the Tifosi? Yeah, the leader of the Tifosi, but um, his two championships mm -hmm. were actually not with Ferrari. He never actually got a championship with Ferrari. He got his two championships with, with Renault, and one of the years, with I think one or two years with Renault, um, Renault was powered by by Honda, so so yeah, who, who knows what, what kind of contacts that Alonso kept from back in those... Honda days. So here's the thing, though. He signed a contract. Was it three years back now with Ferrari? Two well, or two years ago. From from the beginning. Well, yeah. They, they, so he he signed a contract well, until 2016. Anyway, his his oh last boy. contract. So the, they they the, broke him out of that. Yeah, the thing. Oh, he broke himself out of it. Well, but at one point the the speculation was, and the talk around the paddock was that um, Honda actually had to pay 80 million bucks. To be able to secure that Alonso would break his contract with Ferrari, because apparently that's how much it, it would cost. You know, it, oh, one of the shit. exit clauses would be that he have to pay eighty million, but that didn't See, come out of Alonso's pocket at all. I think it, it came, it funneled from Honda. What was Ferrari paying him though? Ferrari was paying him fifty million dollars last year, weren't they? 
I think maybe the, or was how it much 25? these drivers was it 25? get paid? Can it's, I just ask? That might be crazy. Was ridiculous. it 25? Do you know, do you know I, the number? I don't remember the number exactly, but it was in the high millions. He was like at one point the 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 top th- in the top three uh, best paid athletes in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think number three was Alonso. Uh, so he, he, soccer he, he, is breaking all those records now. But yeah, but before I they're think getting it was paid like, enough. Most of them. Yeah. Well, what we talked about before, anyway. Like, yeah, yeah. A lot well, of these guys are paid. Some paid of them, yeah. Some of them get uh, get paid a lot, and some mm-hmm. of them pay to be in the sport. But anyways, he's <laughs> that's fucked. <laughs> he somehow Honda lured him away from Ferrari, though. Like, can can you pull his Twitter up? Yeah. He was on there a few days ago. He and uh, he said something like, uh, "It was like uh, like he was tweeting to his crush or something like." Fernando. Or Alonso, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there he is. Yeah, there he is. Okay. He, yeah, it was like he was tweeting to his crush or something about the uh, the NSX. Scroll down because <laughs> um, probably he's gonna get one of those for free. You know that, that there, one? Maybe. Oh, no, this that's one. in. He's tweeting in Japanese. Oh no, oh, that's a retweet. This one. This one must be. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You still don't know, but one day we will be together. <laughs> Isn't it like a five five smiley faces with the <laughs> with the, with the hearts in the, the hearts, eyes? The hearts oh, for so eyes. Cute. <laughs> that means he's excited. Show show the picture though. Sensitive. Mat- oh, that's that's oh, it. That, that's that that it? it. Anyways, oh, but fuck. that does look like a sweet he's, car, and he is probably gonna get one like of them out of the out of it. Well, of, of yeah. course, Honda is coming back. They're gonna to lend them one in every city they race. Oh yeah, point. Honda's coming back to F one to sell this to sell these cars. He could have got one of those FXXKs, though. Yeah. The, 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 the Ferrari <laughs> fuck. <laughs> the Ferrari fuck, yeah. You can't drive that in, on the streets, though. That's just a track car. Yeah. Um. A- anyway, uh, we, si- we got sidetracked there for a little bit, but this is the Flat Out Fever podcast. Oh, yeah. and uh, an intro there, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jay. Uh, this is Danny here, and Mike is producing this. Hello. Um. And yeah, we're gonna talk about stuff uh, and Formula One stuff, and uh, and and where Roscoe has been cited recently. I think actually <laughs> Hamilton had a picture of Roscoe just lying down. Um, but <laughs> well, there's like there's two Roscos now, isn't there? No, there's Roscoe and Coco. Coco, Coco. <laughs> Coco. Okay. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. He has two bulldogs and uh, and a cherry red uh, 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 airplane. There's a new one. You see, you see <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's what I love. So oh, yeah. look at all the wrinkles. Yeah, <laughs> he's 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 on a bed. He's clearly yeah. on on some sort of a cushion or something. Do you think he took that photo or like so he paid someone to take that photo? No, we looked at this Twitter last time. He yeah. <laughs> it seems like he has a professional photographer. Yeah, that's what that definitely seems like. <laughs> look, at, look at that! Look at that photo there. Can we? Try to think of their name. Look at the the lighting, <laughs> yeah, the depth of is, field yeah, on that. Is, it's, it, it, oh. it, that was definitely not Nicole. Just crazy like guys. Yeah. <laughs> you get that. Yeah. Oh. You take that with his cell phone. Oh my god! <laughs> but enough of that. I'm trying to speak to you, dog. <laughs> and and. <laughs> Um, so yeah, no. Uh, Lewis Hamilton's Twitter is is hilarious. You gotta you gotta follow him if you haven't yet. Uh, you see lots of pictures of his dog. Uh, that's that's guaranteed. <laughs> T- Team LH. Uh. All right, you got you got this article about the uh, super licenses we were just talking about. Uh, what are, what are these tweaks? That's what you just said there. So, so considering the, tweaks to the, the tweaks, I think yeah, yeah. So, the, so there's 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 been a, a great overhaul of uh, um, of the system of points, but now the FIA says it's open to super license tweaks. I think it's because there's mu- there must have been there must have been a lot of pushback. Um, they're basically yeah. saying that the FIA the the FIA uh, Formula Three European Championship is going to be That's, worth more than the GP three series or even. Um, uh, or some some of the some of the engine cups like the Formula Renaults, uh, and and some yeah. of those formula lower formula even though they're stock formulas um, or spec formulas they're still pretty competitive. Yeah, it seems like a bit of favoritism. The especially at the top here. What? Wait, wait. How many points do you need for a super license? I, I believe it's forty. Forty, right? Yeah, yeah. forty. So IndyCar, the FIA. What is that? The World Endurance Championships. Yeah. The F three Euro Championships, but only only LMP one. Oh, LMP one. Only yeah. LMP ones. The GP two series, the FIA F two Championship, and that's it. 
which is which is which, doesn't it doesn't exist the, the the formula 2 championship hasn't existed really under that name for quite a while i think that that's just something that they're trying to bring back uh, with a lot of favoritism cuz oh, yeah. you only need to place third in that <laughs> that series to get your super license I, I don't know how they're planning on making it somehow more competitive than gp2 um, but e- either way, I mean, this is, yeah, this yeah, well, is, so, this hence, is, hence the tweaks to the tweaks. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So th- this chart, I think it was, it was put in a, together in a rush. They may have not considered every single, uh, ca- subcategory or subcategory of motor racing. I, uh, I think it needs to be revised because you were, you were, we were only talking about, basically they're saying that the only road to formula one, um, has to include, uh, a single seater formula at some point or another yeah with that the, i could agree no but, but 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 what about what about the guys that are racing gt cars they have enormous skill yeah it's not the same thing it might not be the same thing but don't close that door i think and uh i um, didn't uh um what's what's his name the scottish guy uh diresta paul diresta he moved to formula one after racing dtm that was those were his credentials. He did really good in DTM. Where is he now? Yeah, back at DTM. <laughs> <laughs> He's D- right back where he started. The DTM he... is like the, the 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 German NASCAR. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was good on camera and all that, but uh, he didn't race so well. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's all up for debate. I really I really liked him. I don't know. I, yeah, he was a good I, exactly. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was a nice guy and everything. That's true, yeah. He didn't get the result. He did. Have, I think he had a lot of bad luck though last year, but he didn't get the results. But he got fired. So anyway, p- part of what 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 they want to do with these super license restrictions, obviously, is is to stop the inflow of people that are deemed by many too young, like Max, like Verstappen. Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen next year. I don't know. I think I think though. I mean, he is seventeen. I have a problem with with saying that somebody that young is going to be participating in Formula One, but it but that sounds scary. <laughs> yeah, it sounds insanity. like a nightmare. Yeah, there's there's going to be uh, it's like the Justin Bieber of uh, of F1, right? <laughs> Something like that. Actually, before that, the, the Justin Bieber of Formula One was was Vettel, but <laughs> I, I guess now it, it can be him. Um, but seriously, he's going to be he's going to go to places like. Um, Monaco, the US. everywhere. He's well, going everywhere. No, but if he goes to the U.S., he can't drink there. So if he, <laughs> if, oh, he if he, that's he probably went, a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Drinking and driving Isn't is not good. No, right? but if he, forget if he, about his driving if you experience. Win, if you win a race, or if you or if you get second or third, <laughs> you are supposed to go on the podium, and they that's give you a bottle of champagne. Oh, oh, shit. So, yeah, like, right, so yeah, yeah, if, right. if he does any good, if he goes, if he finishes even third in America, he's probably just gonna be sitting there with a bottle of champagne, being like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll give him like a non-alcoholic one. Yeah, maybe rose water. They sometimes yeah. use rose water. That'll, that'll come up and open it for him. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. He just yeah. drinks. Yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> I gave my son's approval. <laughs> his dad was a razor, but he. I think so. I think. I think his dad has some sort of involvement in racing. I don't uh, know. I, I want, what are these tweaks to the tweaks, though? Do you know? Because this chart, like you said, it's a little bit favoritist, but. Uh, th- they have to go in that direction. Like that guy's too young. Oh, Think no. about yourself when you're 17, driving. Oh, your, I driving didn't your know shit. I actually your mom's did not try to get my my license until like I was like 18. So that's my 17 year old. So <laughs> I got mine. I the just day didn't I turned, drive. The day I turned 16, I got mine. But. Oh shit! See that you're responsible. <laughs> <laughs> or just eager to know. drive. Eager to drive. Yeah, I was, just, yeah. I was yeah. afraid of the road. <laughs> I, I was afraid of cars coming <laughs> at me. Where? I, would Up stop. in King. Yeah, <laughs> no, totally. Sh- I'm not even kidding. I would like stop on the side of the road. Uh, I was like, "Oh fuck!" And, like I got over it in like a week, so it was fine. But I remember that drive vividly. Like, I passed a written test, like 20 questions. Like, is that a stop sign or yeah. uh, one way? And it's, <laughs> it's pretty. Like, no, I, I actually yeah. failed that the first time, but. I, guess, I, I wasn't a smart kid. I wasn't. I, I got outside. My mom tossed me the keys. She's like, "Here we go." <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> my, my buddy, my friend of mine, was with me from high school. I think he was a bit nervous. That fucking drove home. <laughs> this guy's driving Formula One. Car- well, to be honest, like to be fair, he was uh, probably in those go karts from the time he was eight or nine years old. Well, yeah, and, and and I I think that that you see that a lot, right? Uh, Children of former Formula Formula One drivers or former yeah. racers in any kind of kind of category, 
um, because they get started so young, because their parents are so passionate about it already. And rich. <laughs> and have a little bit of money. Um, then they end up ha like being way ahead um, yeah. because it started that much earlier. So, I mean, that needs, that, that needs to be addressed, I think, because who knows? For, for all we know, the best formula driver <laughs> out there. Index your points based on how many years experience your parents have racing. Yeah. <laughs> is that what this tweak is saying? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Cause then, cause then, I mean, is isn't uh, Rosberg? Rosberg's dad was a, was a champion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That well, was the whole thing. Obviously, he deserves to be where he is, but yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so 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 it's it's meant to stop that. But it, what they've done here with this with uh, with these points that, they, that you accumulate uh, in the lower formula is it, it's a bit ridiculous. It's, it's a bit constraining for some. That's that's what they're talking about. Yeah. Realistically. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But what are the... You haven't said yet. What are these uh, new tweaks? Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about the tweaks. I just know uh, there's some tweaks. You know there's a headline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, they, they said that the, the, it okay. could be tweaked if needed. Ah, these guys. Yeah. They never it, stick with anything. This is the problem. It's all this politicking. This is why we're here. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> without this bullshit... <laughs> Okay. No, it is, but it, I like the headline. Though. You, you know, you know what it is. It's it's all backroom dealing, and that's that, that's where the real changes happen. Because yeah. I I showed you this before, and I actually wanna pull it up again. So <laughs> I took the time to go, and, and this is publicly available stuff to go and print the the, the FIA rule book as it were. So this is this, these are three documents here. There's the 2015. Sporting regulations, so how the how the drivers should, should race. Um, there's a 2015 technical regulations, what the car should look like and, and, and what it should have. And then there's uh, there's um, there's a couple of addendums. Anyway, this this whole package, Jesus Christ, uh, it's uh, over 150 pages long. It looks like a like a small brick or and a tile. <laughs> and and how and much is missing? It, Everything that's important because the, the really important stuff doesn't happen in paper. It happens in backroom dealing. Mm. You know what I mean? In the in the sideways in between the motorhomes. That's 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 where where these meetings are happening. And also this uh, this new F one strategy group that I wasn't so crazy about, but you know, as long as they're coming up with good ideas, it's still good. Mm. See, this is what we were talking about last week. Ferrari's <laughs> Ferrari's major first victory of the year. Months, oh months before the cars even hit the tracks, was finding a loophole in this. Yeah. Oh the, my the, god. The yeah. FIA forgot to put the one date for the engine homologization for this year into this document. Oh my god. And then they so, just yeah. So yeah. So what they've been debating for three weeks now. But this <sighs> is this is sometimes like and they already messed it, it up. Is, well, this is sometimes the stuff well. that wins some races, right? Because and and, and <sighs> that's. A t it's going to make the season a lot more exciting because otherwise yeah. Mercedes was going to run away anyways. Oh, really? Which they will be doing for the first couple weeks. For the first, for the first few races, for sure. Oh, Mercedes is going to be ahead. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, this is how ridiculous this document is. So yeah, this is what <laughs> Ferrari had to sort through to find a, uh, to find a loophole. And this is what um, teams like Red Bull have exploited in the past. Just just finding that, that, that extra thing that wasn't said mm -hmm. specifically wow. and exploit it to... To the end, and 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 then if if it's deemed illegal later, then they'll change it, and that's that's where so the whole development like comes from. The F ducts, right? Yeah, the F ducts came up from there. The uh, the original blown diffusers started from there. For from basically from, this finding from not being it finding rule that these says you can't loopholes. Do it. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> At one point when they were talking in the seventies, when they were using the I'm sure the ground effect. A lot of rules. Oh. The, like the, the, those ground effect wings. So yeah. basically, what they had is, is these. Like like the like an airfoil of an airplane, mm -hmm. but upside down, and they had hidden one basically on the underside of a Formula One car, and to prevent people from seeing really what was going on, this this car had a big like box and like skirts, even when it was on the road to protect anybody from actually figuring out what was actually like making these cars so fast. That was that was <laughs> back in the day, Lotus. But that, that that is sometimes what will win you a race. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Wow. <laughs> it, it happens once in a while. Wow. Teams show up with something crazy. Yeah. And everyone's like, what the hell is that? And then within a week or a race or two it's, races, it's they're, banned. 
added a new section to this saying specifically you can't, you can't do, that. do exactly this. Yeah, so these F ducts they had it was like three years ago. Yeah. Were these like basically tubes? This was like the precursor to the blown diffuser, I guess. A tube from the top of the car to the bottom of the car. Mm-hmm. But basically, like most of them were manual, so drivers were taking their hands off the wheel and like pulling on a string or like covering their hand over a <laughs> flap inside the cockpit. <laughs> oh my to, god! When they're on the straightaway, to give them give uh, them like a boost, a little le- yeah, a little less drag. But but see this, I have a problem with this because in a document this this large, um, there's bound to be stuff that's not relevant anymore. Big. And they and, and 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 this is what I was talking about. Nikki Lauda has said that. Let's yeah. let's go back to this book. Figure out what what doesn't need to be Wait, here. That name I, was very familiar. Well, yeah, Nikki Lauda. He's uh, he's uh, from that movie. I right? knew right. that. There you go. Oh. You knew something. I'm learning so many things. <laughs> Yeah, Nicky Lauda was a three-time world champion. Three or four-time champion? Oh, really? Yeah. He's now... Because he raced against Thor, I believe. <laughs> yes, he did. He did. Thor, yeah. <laughs> He's now non-executive chairman of the Mercedes racing team. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good for him. The one team, yeah. He's, he, his he, face looked fucked. His, his face still looks kind of fucked, but <laughs> yeah. more more age, more worn through. <laughs> mm, yeah, whatever. It's cool as shit, man. He, no, that's he awesome. He fucking survived. Yeah, yeah he still... No, God damn, he, like, he survived through the most dangerous... Racing of all time. What was it like? Like the, the the flames at one point, or the, the temperature of the air that he was breathing was like nine hundred degrees. Oh so with God. every breath, like he was like burning. Scorching his, yeah. His oh. Lungs. oh yeah. I know it's a crazy thing. Holy moly! Motorsport is a dangerous no, sport, it and is. it should be that dangerous. This is what I'm. This is what I'm excited about with it, with, with, but that's with these talks. People on the outside looking in and are like, I just want to see someone crash because it's <laughs> crazy. You know what I mean? That may be the first thing that that, that would attract that, that you. That attracts them. You're like, yeah. oh, wait, this is actually a really intricate performance. And, and yeah, what did you say before? Sorry. You go ahead. Gio Ju- Bianchi's accident increased like web searches to Formula One by over a thousand percent. percent. Ah. Over a thousand percent, yeah. So this yeah, this guy was in a crash in yeah. Japan last year. I, I'm pretty sure we mentioned this before a few times ago. Um, and the day after, for, uh, for like Formula One related searches yeah. on Google, globally went up over a thousand percent. Oh my God, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's... For the wrong reasons. I mean, for the wrong reasons, but I mean, like, it's... I meant to say, like, that's crazy. Well, well you know what? They, and there are the cynics that say that maybe Formula One is too tame right now. Maybe Formula One needs a good old, like, near-death situation, if not, like, a driver, like, completely taken out, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, though, some may call that extreme, but that's, I mean, but then some may say that that's what makes the sport the sport. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I do applaud their decision to maybe – Perhaps overlook safety a little bit and crank up the engines to a thousand horsepower. Yeah. Honestly, I 100% agree with Bernie Ecclestone, and I'm confident. I'm, I believe it's going to happen. I think enough people agree, even inside the FIA, even with what happened to Gio Bianchi. Yeah. You're going to fatten up the tires, take it old school. You know what I don't make like? The wings bigger, bring back the aggressive look, lower the cars for next year. Mm-hmm. And 2017, we're gonna get. How likely is that? We're gonna get going the thousand to horsepower. Like, uh, you have to believe it in your heart. Do you? Do you <laughs> believe it in your heart? <laughs> if you want me to believe, believe it in it. my heart, I'll do it. I'll do it. You just I gotta like, it. pay me or something. I believe enough people were disappointed enough this year, and will be disappointed again. In what, what 2015. Made him, what made him disappointed in in this year? Yeah, but not, now, the now, okay. But look at look at look at what uh, Andrew Benson on on BBC. He's yeah. he's one of he's a BBC the chief F one writer. This is uh, ironic. Yeah, he says that the quieter engines are attracting new fans, and and it's it's basically uh, an argument this is by the Malaysian promoter. Yeah, right? the, the basically yeah the Malaysian promote uh, the Malaysian GP boss. Um, he says that the, that it's bringing out a, a new fan base, and his his argument is that previously uh family guys with their kids would have not felt as compelled to bring like young children and their wives to an f1 event because it's it, it was too loud it was categorically too loud you could hear from blocks and blocks away like oh wait, no man wait holy with holy. the old now yeah, with the old engines like you you would, so that's the problem with well, that remember like an hour ago when you told me to turn my yeah, laptop that was really down? fucking loud yeah, that was, yeah that was like, i didn't yeah. know my laptop could do that could do- <laughs> <laughs> i haven't watched those videos on here before it's 
yeah, you know what I mean. Holy you, shit! But yeah. now, but now you that you don't have the noise, earplugs. Yeah, maybe like earplugs and earmuffs. Do you think before. like uh, uh, whatever uh, racetrack sort of sponsors it should have like give out soundproof sort of either yes. headphones or you ear- could you could they were for sale there. Oh really? Yeah, but yeah you, it should you almost it, be man. mandatory. It's like it's you know, m- way arguably. more intense than a concert. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Or it was. It's, do you sorry, have, was, uh, okay? Maybe a weird question. Uh, do you have a ring in your ears after like you go to something like this? Yeah, you lose oh, yeah. your hearing. Yeah. Yeah. It's you loud. Lose, it's, it's like it's really loud. Not, Holy shit! It, it yeah. used to be. Well, that's like permanent damage. Now it's like, yeah. to your ears. Oh, yeah. It's okay. Now, this is a good comparison that he made was basically, it's like with the hearing protection off. Yeah. You're getting about the same le- sound level as hearing protection on the previous years. Previous years. Oh wow. I never saw the V10s live. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Like the V10s would have been insane. It must have been intense. Yeah. But uh, the, the ironic thing about this, these guys are saying in Malaysia that they're attra- they've attracted new fans or w- will be because well, it's quieter. Weren't they complaining last year? Yeah. Or I'm uh, at the beginning of last year. Pretty sure there might have been that same dude. Yeah. He's they showed him on uh, Sky TV, mm-hmm. like his arm around Bernie Ecclestone. Yeah. And uh, they're like, yeah, because it's one of the first races of the year. There's like, they do Australia and a couple Asian races okay. to start the year. And uh, he's like, you know, Bernie, we're going to have to work on this sound for next year because, uh, you know, maybe we're going to have to work, change the contract otherwise. Because he was kind of pissed that it's not loud, right? Right. But, but, he, but they still got attendance. Is, yeah. And, and, and if anything, now, now they're saying that if, it, if it's bringing more people, to the tracks like or a, a different crowd at least yeah it, let's say if for for each one um person that didn't like the sound and doesn't come back last year a family comes in that immediately makes sense well that to does. be honest that does i disagree because these kids no, are I'm, just going to be sitting there picking their nose want to play <coughs> frisbee they're not going to be paying attention but are those, the, are those the fans of tomorrow? Are those the people that are going to have the memory yeah. like from when, when they were little kids? And they're like, oh, I was, we had such a, good, such a good good day, such a good weekend at the track. Yeah. You know what I mean? It seems, I'm just jealous because I didn't. Yeah, exactly. I never got to go to, to, to a race when I was a kid, but I, I, I'm sure I would have loved it, even just to, like, I mean, just to see the cars. I, mean, I would have been bored at the end, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've been to some stock car racing when I was a kid. It, it seems like it's a bit of both, right? Because like you want to attract new fans, but you also can't be picky about who they are. You know, like even like just the exposure maybe is enough for them to be like, "Hey, when I was a kid, I went to an F1 race." It yeah, was oh yeah, pretty cool. Like the kid might have been distracted, but like what he'll take away from it is like loud cars or or like the funny hat, watching like crazy engines <laughs> fly, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. It, 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 it leaves an, an imprint on you, mm-hmm. and uh, and then if you want to revisit the sport later on, when you like, when you know what's going on, then uh, then you at least you'll have the memory, and like it's easier to familiarize yourself mm-hmm. with that. The irony again with this. So this dude here attracts all the families in Malaysia. They all show up to the race. This year, mm-hmm. next year, 2016, and then 2017. All these kids are sitting around, and the cars come back with a thousand horsepower and uh, like thirty extra decibels. But we don't see. But we don't. <laughs> we still scare, scare them all away. Again. We still don't know how much louder these engines are going to be. And and, yeah. and this, this is a point that I that that I made on that um, little piece that I wrote that um, the the new engines, whereas they might be able to extract a thousand brake horsepower out of them. They might not be much louder. They, they don't necessarily have to be much louder. Well, what, determ- I th- what determines I uh, think how the, loud an engine is? The TERS has a big thing, a big impact on that. Yeah, but that- TERS might stick around. We don't know that yet. Yeah, but. Yeah, I don't know, man. What, can, well, the determines can, the, the loudness of, of, of an engine. Yeah. I, I'd say is that it's, if it's just a naturally aspirated. Um, reciprocating engine, just an engine without any turbos, without any mm-hmm. uh, special energy harvesting shit attached to it, that's going to be louder than a hybrid engine. Okay. Period. Yeah, that, well, that and makes they, sense. They, they don't want to get rid of the hybrid engines. That's right. Well, Bernie, I don't think Bernie cares either way anymore. No. And I think no. him, him caring was a whole bunch of bullshit to try to attract new engine builders who are green conscious. 
which didn't really happen. Well, it would so happen. It, like, it happened. All, right, all the green okay, stuff, but the back. green stuff on the car. Oh, it's like, but, oh, oh yeah, yeah, with some hybrid bits attached. <laughs> but it happened because they brought Mercedes. They brought here's, Mercedes. Here's my argument about the volume, though, because I don't believe this terrorist bullshit. These cars right now are limited to 15,000 RPM. They might go back to eighteen or nineteen or whatever. That that was kick ass because that that was that was this cream part of it was just the the, the, the higher revs. Okay, but say they do that, that's twenty percent faster. It's not a huge amount, but do you remember like five years ago, the Honda Civic I had mm-hmm. with no exhaust pipe? Okay, yeah, that was pretty loud. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that car was louder than these F1 cars with a limit of eight thousand RPM. Yeah. Only four cylinders. Yeah. It was 1.8 liters. And no turbocharger. It that did, was louder, yeah, man. Yeah, it was probably I was louder. setting off car alarms. <laughs> <laughs> that so, thing was ridiculous. Yeah, you could, uh, personally, you could hear think, you coming from miles away. Yeah, I think this Terz takes away a lot more sound than but that's, you think it does. That's just the, the application that the Mercedes found to it. And actually, on that... Um, you really, really, really like this video. Uh, James Allen, um, he only has two posts on his YouTube channel, but James Allen has a pretty descriptive video, and they're both recent, and I think he just he goes over... The first one is about um, uh, the engines, uh, or the Mercedes engine, and the Mercedes development throughout the year, and how what made them so competitive. And the second one uh, touches on what we were talking about um, the last time, the um, the wheel, the... the uh, or sort of like yeah, yeah like the steering wheel and and everything that the buttons did and the difference in between nico's um uh steering wheel and lewis's it's did, really really that. interesting yeah you got yeah. you gotta see it so it's uh, and okay, i guess we'll post a link to that uh somewhere down down there in the comments or something but yeah no you gotta check it out it's it's really really interesting if you if you want to really get into uh, the more technical stuff uh really check it out james allen's channel on youtube yeah yeah, it's like you're seeing two guys on one team, and the the difference between their steering wheel, it's intense. Oh yeah, because yeah, we, we talked about that last time, right? The 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 crazy. Uh, yeah, and a it, little it bit, blew my mind. They, it blew well, my mind. They, they, they so customized we looked at it one though, right? Drivers. Yeah, we looked at one wheel really, like, like yeah. you're saying, like two the two drivers on Mercedes. Each one has a different arrangement. Completely altogether. different. Yeah, generally do the same thing. Yeah, like obviously the um, the, the they're driving the same car. Yeah, they're driving the same car. The but exact same as, car. As far as anyone knows. But, but here's... <gasps> oh, conspiracy. Well, but <laughs> here, here's the thing, and, and I found this very, very interesting when uh, James Allen was describing this on the video, and it's that uh, Lewis's um, steering wheel has a few more, like, of the rotary knobs or something than, than Nico's is because he actually demanded that uh, that he be able to control a little bit more of a either the transmission or the, or the brake bias going into and out of the corner than Nico does. Like so 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 Lewis actually can play around more with that kind of setting like going into and out of, out of a corner than Nico does. I don't know, but I don't know if, if maybe that, that's what made it the difference, but he definitely has those knobs there for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But but I we all know that Lewis that, is the most like the 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 better talented uh driver yeah. out of the two. Yeah. Well, he proved it. According to his dad, he's gonna prove it again by midseason this year. And there's nothing that I mean. Twice if, as fast. Why? Why not? I think I think Lewis might very well run away with it, unless Honda have really something serious with the Plan B. I'm not gonna put my Ferrari's already saying that winning once or twice is gonna be like winning the championship for them. So yeah, I, I'm I'm not gonna count too much on Ferrari because even though it could be sandbagging, um, we know that Sergio Marchione, uh, a, a Canadian. Italian Canadian, uh, but he's the one that's running Ferrari and the Fiat Group actually. Um, he, he he's a guy that doesn't. He's not known for bullshitting. He's not known for fucking around. He's and he's if he's. I think that if he said that winning two races is going to be a big accomplishment next year, I think he actually means it. So I think Ferrari is actually out uh, of contention. They're probably just going to want to try to like not go in, not fall. Um, further down because Lotus is getting a Mercedes engine next year. Remember that? Yeah. So who, they, know, who knows what they might be able to do? Ditch Renault. Yeah. Well, but they, they kept their shitty driver <laughs> lineup. But hopefully, uh, Romain can do something for, for them. Actually, on my way down here, I saw a tweet from uh, I was looking up uh, these new cars that uh, 
Lotus completed this today their crash testing. Oh yeah. So I'm sure uh, Grosjean. But they've been working Grosjean on their and car. Maldonado are extra <laughs> extra happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Car's safe for them. They've oh, both been upside now. Only one of them's been upside down. Oh, Grosjean caught like he he will always be remembered as the guy that caused that incredible crash, uh, Belgium a couple of years ago. That's, oh wow! No, my- this is right into the first turn. He lost control and he like he almost drove on top of Alonso. <laughs> over his head. <laughs> like yeah, That's over his favorite, head and chopped his head off. My favorite F one gif of all time. It was just uh, Alonso's like life flashing before his eyes <laughs> that, <laughs> during that accident. It was. <laughs> we'll show you that crash man it was intense it was it was one of the one of the worst crashes that uh, that we've seen in formula one in a long time and it was pretty much all this one guy's fault see you can find it see if you can pull it up Uh, yeah it's quite quite intense yeah uh, what am I searching for Uh, (laughs) should I bring it up here yeah yeah, interesting that's Lotus was the first team to get their crash testing down they know they're gonna Go. Uh, what We're was it? Be testing it in the real world. Was it too. Belgium 2012? Yeah, it was 2012. Yeah, Belgium 2012. 2012 crash. F1 crash. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, going back to what you're saying there, though. Yeah. <laughs> I think on uh, Monday. <laughs> oh, it's a short one. Yeah, it's a short clip. Yeah. It goes it's, like it's uh, right into the first corner. You don't see it. He until ruined many people's day. Yeah, see. this is just like the onboard of Alonso. So watch over here, and oh, boom! Oh my god! By so many people. If you see this thing from overhead, it was retarded. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, that year he did that five was it five or six times. First corner of the race. Yeah, fucked up everything. Yeah, he said it's like he he can he can drive a, an F one car pretty quickly, but he doesn't seem to be able to. Um, uh, to know his space around the track. Yeah, see? Boom. Oh. Yeah. We see how close he was to Alonso's face, though. I wish it was like a slow mo. Don't blink. There is, but Bernie won't let us see it. Uh... And, okay, watch this. Boom. Oh. See that? That was very close. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, in, in, that's a big accident that made it to the news back then. Wow. Um, and it was Grosjean. And he, yeah, like Danny said, that year, that same year, he had a few more crashes. And since then, he still, it looks like he's 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 better now. He's He doesn't crash as much. He's a bit more aware of his pace. But I don't know if that has turned him into a slower driver. Yeah, he seems a bit more timid for sure. Yeah. That's and Maldonado just doesn't give a fuck. He's, he's never <laughs> nothing slowing him down. I don't know why. Plows through every corner. I, I thought that for sure he was going to be gone this year, because yeah. uh, didn't Venezuela announce that they were going to cut their their sports funding or something? Venezuela yeah, the is price in trouble. Of oil is crashing. Yeah, Venezuela is in trouble. He's not going to be able to to get anywhere near enough money. He's, so this not coming back next this Venezuelan Pastor mm-hmm. Maldonado he's yeah. a, he's an F1 driver and he's clearly an F1 just because he brings money to the sport to his to his Lotus team. He was buddies with Chavez, no? Yeah, 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 exactly. So Chavez, you know, Chavez, mm-hmm. the f- former dictator now dead, um, was really into like keen into his, his sponsoring him and whatever. And mm-hmm. Venezuela obviously back then it was in, in better days, but now Venezuela is in, in a, like big trouble, big financial trouble. Um, and surely the Venezuelan taxpayers must be wondering what are we doing still spending millions of dollars in budget, like tens of millions of dollars that, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it, it may not seem a lot when you're talking about a whole country that makes billions or mm-hmm. trillions, but, but still, you're, you're talking about millions of dollars that could be spent in like feeding, feeding their, their population. <laughs> hey, they're dumping on this one guy yeah. and he is, he's, he won one race. And I still don't know how he did it. Remember uh, uh, Barcelona 2012 or something? He won one race, and since that race, I don't think he scored a single point. I think it was Valencia, maybe. No, it was Barcelona. Barcelona. But uh, okay. Alonso won Valencia that year. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, since that race, he, he hasn't he hasn't done much. No, he's clearly not not all in the game, and and he, he's he, he, is he maybe the worst driver. In one of the good teams, yeah, I'd say so. I would say yes. I'd I'd say say out, out of the top, the, out of the top teams, he's the worst driver. Yeah, he's not the worst driver, but he's in the top team. Yeah, it's retarded. 
and 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 Lotus should be back next year. I I, I guarantee that because they dropped they dropped any work on this year's car or most work most of the work in this year's car they dropped it about halfway through or or actually very early on they decided that they were going to focus on this year's car. That's why they have uh, such an early release. Yeah. Lotus dropped the ball hardcore like or like 2013 with the. I think they were being honest with themselves, and they re- when they realized that the Renault engine wasn't going to take them anywhere, they 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 they, they realized we got to do something. And as soon as they figured out, yeah, that they were going to get Mercedes this year, um, then 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 they thought, okay, we, we've sorted that out. Now we can focus on bring on building a car that's going to be able to handle that. We'll see. But even the driver lineup they had two and three years ago, they had Raikkonen, Raikkonen and, and Grosjean, and be, before Grosjean. What was that Polish guy's name? Uh, oh, Jesus. No, it was it was oh Grosjean. No, no, it was it was always Raikkonen and Grosjean. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, that's so that that's a team that could shuffle things around and could bump Ferrari out of that fourth place in the constructors that they're at right now. Maybe, yeah. And that's the that Mercedes that would be a. That would be a sickening blow to Ferrari, and that's that, But that's 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 the thing, and maybe maybe that's what McLaren is actually trying to do when they're saying that they're gonna that they're not a technology group, that they're not focusing so much. On, uh, Ron Dennis came out to the press and say said that their focus is still very much F one. But are they spreading themselves too thin? Is that is that maybe why they're not? They didn't perform last year with a Mercedes engine. They were the worst Mercedes team. And and it's, McLaren shouldn't be in that position. It's Ma- possible. It seems like they're focusing pretty hard on their road cars. Yeah, and for a small company. McLaren is is uh, the team that uh, okay. Wh- whereas Ferrari has been there from the beginning, mm-hmm. and because Ferrari has been in Formula One for more years than any other constructor, they have the more champ the most championships. Makes sense. Oh, but they've been around and they've been very competitive uh, when they've been around. Mm-hmm. Um. McLaren though has only been in Formula One like for well it has been in Formula One much less than for, for much longer less time than Ferrari, mm-hmm. but in that time they are the winningest team. Oh, so they, 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 they've they've won uh, a greater share of the races that they enter than any other team. I think wow. I think it, that, that that record is still I think it's going to be taken over by Red Bull, but so far I think they they they're still so. It's a team that is known for winning F1 races. It's a, it's one of the big names in F1. Mm-hmm. And last year, and the year before, and the year before, and the year before that one, they underperformed. They and they underperformed to a level that it shouldn't behoove them because they have a, an actual factory with all the technology. They, they, this thing is supposed to be unbelievable, and mm-hmm. it, and it, and it's and it's like, like. It, one day we'll look it up. This thing is like a like, like a like a super villain's lair. Like it, it's in this like <laughs> big plot of land, and like it's shaped all and everything is supposed to be like where it is, and everything is millimetrically right. Uh, yeah, it's and, 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 and yeah, and it's and it's, <laughs> it's amazing. No, it's supposed to be one of those amazing things. Like the McNally, uh, I think it's called McLaren Technology Center. Whatever, they have a kick-ass facility. They have the budget. It's still be, lake, and it's it's hidden behind a hill. Oh yeah, you can't it's, see it from anywhere. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, McLaren Technology Center. Uh, but anyway, it is really like a superhero's lair. Yeah, it, it is almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like so they have this thing, whereas all the other te- uh, well, or a few of the other teams that beat them, like Williams, like Red Bull, they have their facilities are not that that good. They're not as good as as McLarens, or not as uh, n- nearly as big or. Um, they don't have like the the same kind of a budget. Jesus, this place looks like a yeah uh, an evil lair. It's yeah. sort of like yeah, you know what I mean. Headquarters, <laughs> yeah, like evil doing. You you, you you can imagine it like popping out of the ground, being like no, it starts like, spinning. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah yeah it's like, like yeah. it opens up and like something comes out, yeah some sort of rocket or something comes out of it. But, There's but, a rocket in that lake. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, but that, so that's McLaren. They they hold themselves up to a very high standard, but they still haven't won a championship for for well since since Hamilton. Since Hamilton. Won. Yeah, since Hamilton in 08. So they're they're a little behind then. They're a little behind. Ferrari's behind. Yeah. Well, I think uh, Monday, Maccione was apologizing to the Tifosi. He said uh, he's 
fairly confident that Ferrari is not going to be competitive at all until the last five, six races. But it, which is a shame because terrible. Everyone wants. They're to not going to have a new engine until after the first five or six races. Everyone wants to see a competitive Ferrari, and um, why? Why wouldn't you be competitive? Why would they seem like that's what okay. they do? Right? Sports car red. You know what? <laughs> I have. If, I, I am red. a. I am a fan of Ferrari. Yeah. Uh, l- let's put it out there. But I just like many a Ferrari fan. I I, I just have a problem with the way the that a. it's managed. Ah, okay. And 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 Ferrari, it's it's everything points at mismanagement. And this new guy that they got, um, that that stepped in, um, Domenico Marchione, the the half uh, the, the Canadian Italian, mm-hmm. um, he. He he wants to change it all because the, there seems to be that culture of of pointing fingers and a culture of maybe not um. not getting things done properly at Ferrari that that it's that it was very very Italian and and, and very traditional and, and, and Italians stick to their customs and whatever. Sure. Um, not necessarily at Ferrari, but one of the things that I do remember hearing about Marchione is that uh, when he got to Fiat, um. When when Chrysler bought Fiat, or Fiat bought Chrysler, whatever, he moved to Fiat to the Fiat Group, and he was appalled because in order to get anything done, like so say if I, if I'm the chief executive and I want and you and you wanted to talk to uh, your CEO, like your COO or like the chief um, information officer yeah. or, or the financial officer, you have to go, you have to get your secretary to call their secretary and arrange like a meeting, even though there were like a few doors down. You, you know, there was just, oh. and, 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 and Italians, like they, that was like a very Italian thing. They didn't want to, they didn't want to, you know, not have these things. And, right. and one of the first things that Marconi did at Fiat when he was making it leaner and meaner and more competitive um, got rid of all yeah, that. Got, yeah, he got rid of all totally. the pointless bureaucracy. Yeah, and, and and that is the thing that 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 perhaps he's now trying to do with the racing team. Oh, okay. But but the one thing that I would have to say is that and and, and I kind of because Ferrari is the kind of team and it's the, the only team I believe that does this that when they go somewhere around the world they bring a little tent a little Ferrari tent specially designed <laughs> for their mechanics to take smoke breaks because they're Italian they have to sit, yeah. out, sit, sit out with a coffee and a smoke and bibbidi bobbidi boobidi bobbidi otherwise it wouldn't yeah, yeah, yeah. be it wouldn't be Ferrari don't yeah. forget Ferrari a glass of wine yeah a glass, yeah. Of, a glass of wine so you know what I mean so yeah. Yeah, if, totally. if, if you get rid of that if you get rid of the Italianness and the wildness of Ferrari I, would I th- it still be Ferrari? Yeah, yeah. Right. Does it still have a soul? Now, <laughs> now, obviously, what? No, but Domenico Marchino, what, what he wants to do is 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 make Ferrari profitable and make Ferrari uh, a well-oiled machine, um, so he can float it in New York. He wants to actually sell the sh- spin off Ferrari from the from the Fiat Group and sell it, uh, put it out for sale in the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, mm. publicly. Yeah. yeah, but if in order for him to do that, I think he still has to wait for Ferrari to start winning races. And that's the thing. That, so he what, whatever he's doing, he's doing with an objective. He has a few years plan in mind where he, he knows that maybe by doing a, th- a few certain things, he can bring Ferrari back to winning races because once Ferrari starts winning races, yeah. then their road car credibility goes up by a lot. Mm. And and yeah, it's 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 one of those things. Ferrari's winning races is linked to them selling cars. I mean, are are they really uh, like are they doing poorly? No, they're not doing that. I was po- say no, they're not okay. exactly. Yeah, they're not exactly doing doing, doing poorly. But right. it's it's one of those things like like many things in Formula One right now. Right. If it if it continues in the. It, it, the, the way it's been going, trend. yeah, you can okay. see the trend and you can okay. see it coming. You can see it in the horizon that they gotta do something. They gotta, they gotta repackage Ferrari. They gotta do something. Bring it, bring back, mm-hmm. bring back a, a few wins a season. They don't have to win a championship as long as they're up there fighting in in second place or or, or whatever. I think Marchione might be satisfied with that and still like receive enough money out of out of selling that off. But mm-hmm. what a sad day it would be when. Ferrari guys are, are showing up without their little smoke tent. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't know, we're talking to the the hockey guy here. Yeah. yeah. The we're and, we're and we're talking to this guy, but we're talking about the like discerning right. No, I get it. European totally. sports car purchase totally purchaser. Yeah, that's true. You that's got true. your choice of the McLaren and <laughs> Mercedes <laughs> and the Ferrari. 
You could pick whichever one you want. One thing that I want to talk about, though. You're going to look at who's winning races. That's Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's yeah, true. Totally. And, and so, who, who is winning races? Right now, Mercedes. Mercedes. Mercedes, Mercedes yeah. took it last year, and they ran away with it. I'm learning so They're much. kicking all the ass right now. Yeah, yeah. The, okay. the, 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 those damn Germans. <laughs> those Germans. Yeah, the Germans. And I'm German. Yeah. <laughs> We're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> They they are they are they they're doing really well and 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 they Mercedes did a fantastic job they deserve to be they deserve to have won the championship there was no no other car mm-hmm. that could have beat them by by a long way mm-hmm. it, and, and and that's true I mean what what Daniel Ricciardo did was some people think they thought that it was unachievable <laughs> yeah yeah to win over for, over Mercedes it, it wasn't necessarily the most reliable. It was reliable, but it wasn't the most reliable. It still, they still kept having to change parts, and maybe I think because of that, their um, their little PR experiment still n- didn't necessarily go one hundred percent. But I'm sure they're selling more cars because uh, because of their of their victory, and I'm sure they're going to be yeah. selling a lot more cars next year too because they're pretty much guaranteed to be either up there winning the championship or in contention. Yeah, hmm. but who? Yeah, who would come up? I, Aside of aside of this mythical return of Honda, <laughs> it's, ha- it's happening. It's it's happening, but to, to what degree? I really want to believe. I really want to believe in a McLaren Honda that you know if, if would bring back the days of of Senna driving driving that red uh, MP44. Hey, I'm I'm trying to sell a, a black Accord right now. <laughs> <laughs> the price could double. <laughs> Nine thousand dollars, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Email me. It's black. It's black. May have a couple, a couple scratches here and there. No, it's fixed, man. Don't say that. Oh, you fixed it? I fixed it. Nice. It's never, ever seen. Uh, so I was told to ask a question. And yeah. It's mostly uh, comedic and value. Yeah. By who? But uh, by a friend of mine. Okay. Uh, and and I'm actually kind of worried about this for the driver's sake. Sure. Oh, shit. What happens if like you? gotta take a dump or you've gotta like go to the washroom like has that ever happened <laughs> has there ever been like a point where like it's like even if like say not even that but like nerves or something like and the guy needs to throw up or like take a break what happens in that situation if it's ever happened i'm Num- gonna say by the look of your face no number two i think you you just, you shit just, your pants. You just hold it no i'm, I'm not sh- sure if, how many I'm of these guys wear pants. diapers no, I don't Some think. The, I don't think they do i think honestly you're so hot in there you're just sweating oh okay yeah. these guys are like <laughs> I think they lose like literally like two or three liters yeah. of water of, of fluids Holy during moly. a race. Yeah, yeah, yeah like a, it's, a couple it must kilos. be so hot in there. Well, yeah, a race is a yeah, grueling losing, thing. Like, over a weekend, like, I don't know. I, this now it sounds crazy. This yeah, is awesome. Yeah. Over a weekend, like more than ten pounds, you're sweating out. Oh, wow. Maybe close to fifteen. Some guys. Jeez. Yeah. Louise. Yeah, a couple of kilos. You have your drink bottles, like whatever, like a liter, or maybe two liters. And and this this drink man. water basically like goes out, goes out of a tube, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, like you press a button uh, that's on your steering wheel. And like the water one shoots out. One of those out. buttons. Yeah, yeah, one of those buttons. Oh, yeah, those well, buttons. yeah, one of those buttons, buttons is a water button. Um, yeah. and it, has a, it has a drop on it. Print, <laughs> printed. It's a blue button or, or something like that. Right? Look this shit up. Some teams use a wave symbol. No, but okay, but but picture okay. this. But the, the, the thing the is that the thing is that ocean wave. The thing is that now the water is gonna be as hot as everything else because it has to go through like the same tubes. Uh, <laughs> so they're drinking like really, really hot water. And one, um, I think it was. Um, I heard Alonso's gonna throw. Some green tea bags in his. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it Japanese. Yeah. Oh my god, that'd be so funny. <laughs> Just uh, yeah, I, I, I wonder if they get to drink anything <laughs> like that's soup. not water, <laughs> like uh, on that thing. Like if they can, like, if they can, like if like Vettel has like a, a yeah, Red Bull thing. Red Bull, Red Bull, <laughs> intravenous. Yeah. It just sprays into his eyes when he presses the button. <laughs> Just a, 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 a light uh, Red Bull mist. Right, right. He's, he's gonna just sweat Be, before and after the race. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be, before be really and after fun. the race, we'll see these guys on a scale with their uniform and helmet. Yeah, weighing themselves. Holy shit! Let's see how much they lose. Yeah, and also to 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 make sure that the, the, the car is still within the rules. But but anyway, yeah, it's 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 uh, a race is a grueling thing. Mm-hmm. A big challenge this year, I think. With uh, Mexico's being added to the calendar, mm-hmm. oh, is it going to be that, the highest? Is it, is it going to be the highest? It is Mexico. Ooh. Yeah, Mexico City is like some a, people are going to pass out. Yeah, man, seventy-seven hundred foot elevation. It's up there. It's the highest elevation race ever. 
Yeah. That's well, crazy. actually, not ever because they raced at the same track 45 years ago. But. Oh. And and also and apparently uh, South, South Africa that? apparently was was a bit higher when they when they race in, in oh, South right, Africa. Okay. Uh, but uh, well, well, no, it's it's a huge difference, though, man. Like I know, mm-hmm. like two two three weeks ago, there was a UFC event there as well. Mm-hmm. And I know, like a bunch of the fighters showed up two and three weeks ahead of time just, just to, to get acclimatized just to, get used to, to the altitude. Holy crap! Yeah. Well, man, it, it, but when they race in Sao Paulo last year in Brazil. So the Brazilian uh, Grand Prix is, is in Sao Paulo. Mm-hmm. Um, brilliant circuit. But this year they were saying that um, because it's higher up, the air is thinner. Mm-hmm. And what that caused is the previous cars, because they were naturally aspirated yeah. engines, um, they would have, you know, the engines would have trouble breathing and the cars wouldn't be as fast. A little bit and, less downforce. Yeah. Oh, wow. th- and that, that, that's thinner. why this past year um, the cars were clocking um slower laps than the year before except for in brazil because since the car is turbocharged or yes this car has a turbocharger Mm -hmm. then it gets getting more air anyway so the difference in altitude from you know whatever to brazil didn't affect them as much so it would be interesting to see if because mexico city is going to be that much higher is it going to start to become a problem with the turbo engines Hmm. I think more so for the drivers themselves. Just yeah, yeah, just just, just fighting, breathing, breathing, just, just fighting, breathing, sweating and breathing. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're you're pulling like these really quick turns, like that, oh, yeah. those four. And if you have a little less oxygen than you're used to, you're you you know, fucked. You're fucked. <laughs> you're fucked. Like you pass out and like it's, it's not even true. like it's that's not true. even like one driver's problem because if one driver fucks up, that could wipe out like a whole bunch. Like that turn we just saw, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, though, it's not going to be as tough as it should be. Because of a man named Herman Tilke. <laughs> if, you, if you look at the way you said it, made him sound like a douche. He's so a, I hate, he's I a hate douche him already. Yeah. If, yeah. if uh, you don't have to pull it up, but if you take a look at uh, or anybody listening, if you, if you take a look at the layout of the Mexican race course in whatever it was, 1964, the last Autodromo time they raced there. Todromo Hermanos Rodriguez. Compared to this year, uh, it's. It's depressing, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, honest, actually, I do like the stadium section they built. Yeah, but they built it right on top of that fucking half circle, that hundred eighty degree turn, for whatever reason. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't. I have no idea you why. Got half and of even, that corner now. Yeah, yeah, about what a week ago, I saw I, an interview with um, uh, Ted Kravitz. And and the, he was being interviewed for British TV and um, for a news segment, and he was like, "Oh yeah, we're we're really excited to go to Mexico, blah blah." And that that was the only I remember. That's the only corner that he mentioned. He says, "Oh yeah, this at the end of the circuit, there's this fantastic Peraltada corner, Peraltada, yeah, that's the, what per, it was yeah, called, the yeah. Peraltada corner that does a 180. Nah, not anymore. They don't have that. It does about 85 or 95 somewhere in there now." Yeah, well, well, I'm looking up this the the Mexico Mexico track. Yeah, just just looking for Mexican pretty, Grand Prix. Uh, there was a whole back section that was S's back and forth. Like, yeah, why the fuck did they get rid of that? It's it's not very dissimilar to right. Yeah, so this was the old track. Would see like this this thing here. That was yeah. the the Peraltada. The, the Peraltada last turn fourteen. It's a giant 180 degree super fast corner. Super dangerous. Somebody, yeah, it looks somebody super died there. Dangerous. Oh, so someone died there. Somebody died there. Whoa. But if you see this, all this whole yeah, all section this stuff, from number six to thirteen, that got has tamed been smoothed down. Out. Yeah, really. Because they kept Is there the, like maybe an updated one. Yeah, you should be able to see the new version. If you go to if you go to the Wikipedia, this one looks, this one looks a little different. That actually right there, the fourth one from the right. Yeah, no, 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 that's no. no, no. That, they, they did more changes to that. That's not the one. Oh, you're right. That is a bit older. Yeah, but. Anyway, yeah, anyways, it's, it's they not within the same fence line, they smooth out those S's. Like those S's are similar to what's at the Circuit of the Americas. Okay. Also a brand new Tokyo track, but Circuit of the Americas is a, is a for the American Grand Prix. Yeah, it's in, in Austin, Texas, but they have uh, wider runoffs. So what they did was make this track a lot safer, but. Uh, I don't know. Many would say mm. too safe. Yeah, it's not, it's not showing you what uh, the difference. Uh, we'll show you, and uh, you, you'll see. It's just, it's just not what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, there's a there's a really good video on YouTube that uh, they just show you like it's kind of like a movie trailer. Yeah, it shows you the construction overlay of the old track and the new track. Oh, well, that's it, cool. it used to look like a like a 1960s track, right? 
It looks it looks super modern now, but I don't know. Like a lot of people think that this guy here in Turkey, for whatever reason, they're like the sole contractor. They design and build all these tracks. Yeah, so it's approved. it's it's one of Bernie's cronies. So um, they, they, this guy that runs F1 for has whatever has, reason has a has a buddy that he's basically the only one that gets the contracts for layouts of the tracks. Whenever they're doing a track restructuring or building a new track where there's not a track before, yeah, they just ring up this guy and give him millions of dollars i'm sure <laughs> to design sure, these yeah. tracks that in all honesty uh he's designed quite a few of them and a, only a couple of those are, are are really good yeah like well we're talking about next year's calendar korea got canceled well, korea should have gotten canceled canceled i don't think i don't think it it got canceled. Track. i think they were just uh, korea just they just got offered the option to participate and they declined it yeah. but anyway yeah so uh, they quick question if money. we can just slightly go back Mm-hmm. Yeah, go the ahead. last part. Uh, mm-hmm. What what determines what's a what a what a like a strong uh, racetrack is or like a weak one? Well, I don't know if it causes excitement. Obviously, I don't know, man. So, like, like from from the discussion before, like that a bigger like that big turn obviously is quite dangerous and yeah. Some, wh- somebody did die there at I think the last race at that track. But mm-hmm. let's say like, if you look at the the track at Sochi, that's built around the Olympic Stadium. Yeah. There's no elevation change. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't know, man. There's gigantic runoffs. They also have they have a corner almost exactly like that Perotada to the left though. So mm-hmm. Just turning left about 180 degrees. I don't see why he had to ruin that corner. Maybe be, maybe because he already has one in Russia. I, to, no, they, they they removed it in safety grounds just, and like just because it would yeah. it, it, it would allow them to build a better stadium section. I I don't I don't like believe it. it's a safety man cuz Russia has yeah, a wall on the outside of their oh, perotada. Man. Well, for sure. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure it's it's, it's, it's got to do with money and it's got to do with bad planning, I'm sure. But it, 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 this guy, so he the thing is that he's he's giving these par- parameters from the FIA that I think he has to comply with in terms of safety like runoff areas and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um but a lot of this stuff that makes the track safer makes it boring. To be uh, honest, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, because it, it, so they can't have like sweeping turns with change elevation, blind corners. Um, a blind corners is something that happens like when when there's a change in elevation, and at the end of the elevation, if there's a corner, you can't see it. You just have to drive by instinct, oh. right? Yeah, and 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 one of those that that big Peraltada. Turkey, Turkey had a crazy. Well, the, the, the thing with a big Peraltada that that does that that does like the perfect circle, um, is that as you're driving it in an F1 car. The best strategy is not to drive in the circle, but rather go almost like a flower, like that, boom, and do like that. Hit the apex like three times, and what that does is that it gives you like some ultimate momentum going out of the corner oh, and, and gives okay. the car more speed somehow. Yeah, and, and, and seeing drivers managing that and actually having to like calculate like when they come in and out right. is really exciting to see. So we're not going to get to see any of that. That really answered my question. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, but but I, I call I call Max. I haven't seen it yet. I've seen onboards from the '60s or whatever, but I'm already calling Mexico ruined. Yeah, I don't. I, I I hope I hope I'm wrong, but I I, I don't like it, and I I agree with you. Uh, Circuit of the Americas is a new one though, and that's one of my favorite tracks. He got it right, man. There's some. It's amazing. I, I love that track. Malaysia too is is also amazing. It's it's a great track. He's got it right once in a while. Did you see about this? Uh, uh, the the changes in Monaco that uh, Joe Sayward uh, posted. Apparently, they are they are working on on just making some church uh, changes around the tobacco corner. Yeah, that's the dangerous part. I saw two. I was I forgot to tell you, man. Like two three days ago, there was some tweet. I don't know if you saw it. Some tweets. No. They got the whole fence down. What? And, and they got some backhoes there digging up the whole street. You know what it is for? Look at it. Apparently, Find it's it. he's doing it, or or uh, they're doing it's it so the Monaco prince construction. No, so the prince can uh, can house his cars there. What? Yeah, it's something like that. So they're yeah. not changing the track though. No, they are changing the track. What? Yeah. Fuck that guy. Who does he think he is? <laughs> he is the <laughs> prince of Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Well, here's another Turkey story that was up about two days ago. He was uh, defending the layout for Azerbaijan, which I believe is Iron coming Man in two. 2017. <laughs> Iron Man 2. Yeah, Iron Man 2 did, did happen around Monaco. Do you remember us looking at the, the layout for Azerbaijan? 
It was like a, a, a square and then the city part. Yeah. So around like Baku. The old Baku. East, the eastern, for anyone that hasn't seen it, the eastern third or so of the track is a gigantic square. Like, yeah. It's a straight, a right turn, a long, it's more of a rectangle, a super long turn, a right turn, yeah. a shorter straight, a right turn, Sorry. and an even longer turn. So, no, Tokyo was uh, trying to defend it the other day. So I, he's like, oh, you have to see it in person. Uh, coming I mean, up this the back. one looks pretty squirrely right here. They, 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 this is a, a classic squirrely track. They, they, <laughs> this might be the slow. It is the slowest track, I think. Yeah, it's the slowest track of the of um of the championship Probably yet. Probably the most dangerous. Team. Yeah, yeah. Yet it is the most dangerous and definitely the the most renowned uh, uh, racing. Uh, like race in the yeah. world, really. This how is how long are they one of these tracks, like uh, uh, meter wise, kilometer wise? How long? You can see right there. This one's a uh, three point three four zero kilometers. Very cool. They try. This one is one of the smallest ones, though. Okay. Um, they go from basically this length to about seven kilometers. But the one, the seven kilometer one, that's a spa, yeah. and 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 Sochi. Because there's only two of them that actually go that far. Sochi's the second longest now. Yeah. Six some. Um, yeah, Sochi F1 track. That one in paper to me, it looked like a pretty cool track. Oh, it does look kind of cool. Yeah, it looked like there, there would be some interesting racing there, but uh, a lot of people say that the racing wasn't that great. See, they got yeah. a Peraltada there. There's you see the sign, the apex, just before the apex, you're at 305 kilometers per hour. That's awesome. With a wall on the outside, there's no reason they had to dig up Mexico. Yeah, no reason for that. Well, who knows? I mean, do we? I guess who are we to judge the works of uh, Her Tilke? Uh, if you want to throw the talk about uh, Mexico for one second here, I don't know how we missed this because of all this sh news that we're reading. But this is a FIA circuit license grade one for a permanent circuit in Moscow, Russia, granted July third, two thousand and twelve. Yeah, this has been in the plans for a while. But that's so. So that's what they wanted to do. And actually, I I do remember that when that came out. Um, yeah, when, see, I don't remember this at all. Well, yeah, I I actually I started thinking about it, and I remember when that came out. When that was a story, people were saying, "Oh yeah, there's going to be an F1 race in Russia for sure," um, and they're talking about doing it in Moscow. And I thought that that was a fantastic idea because having a race with the background of Moscow, and I I think Moscow could put put uh, they they they, they can. They can pull off a pretty good show if if if, if it had been there. But, yeah, but, now but, but now they're saying that, you know, th th there were these considerations and they had to do it at Sochi just to justify exactly building Sochi in it the first place. built to justify the Olympic Park. The Olympic Park in Sochi. So I can just read this here from Joe Sayward. Just a few days ago, the Moscow city authorities announced they had halted development of a development of a project called Aeropolis, which was a huge fairground, retail and office complex with exhibition space, hotels, and a Formula One track near the Nukovo Airport in the southwest of Moscow. So it was announced. Awesome. Sorry. That's but but what what were they thinking? Because. Uh... <laughs> yeah, is so is Russia in any in any kind of position to be spending money now? It's, that's probably all that all it is. I think they, they started building before yeah. all, all their uh, all these contracts were in place before like the whole Crimea stuff has, has started happening. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so the chairman of the airport, which is a huge investor in this project, bringing in tourists, said it was necessary to stop the development because the repayments on loans required were no longer viable. <laughs> the rubles worth. Less, Nothing. less than half what it was when they started building this. Oh, my God. But, however, it seems the F1 circuit may go ahead without the rest of the development, and they probably will ditch Sochi at that point. But but here, here, here's what <laughs> I, I... I thought that at one point I heard that the idea was being floated around for these semi-permanent um, street circuits that could be used as, say, part of a larger highway system on the off-season and... and, and for the for the Grand Prix, you'd be building temporary facilities every time that, that happens. Um, 
and and I and I you know when you when you hear it like that, it doesn't sound like the most brilliant idea, maybe. Um, but what that would allow to do is get more municipal authorities um, involved, or 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 uh, just get more government money. Because if you can find a place, say just outside a city like Moscow, or or just outside a city like Baku, because I think I I thought that that's what they wanted to do with Azerbaijan for some reason, uh, or maybe or maybe with Thailand it was. Anyway, just find find a place outside um, of just outside of the city that needs. That, that, that needs some roads for better influx, make the roads so that it, in some connection of it, it can form a nice F1 track. Use it as a city road to interconnect things in the, the rest of the year. And when the F1 event happens, have some temporary facilities so you can put temporary grandstand, grandstands, kind of like what they do in Montreal, but actually use it as a, um, like as, as a useful piece of road. If they do that, they they don't only cost or keep the cost down of making the track, but actually of running it. I think it makes a lot of sense, and that's what they should be really investing their time on. I think it makes too much sense, and it'll never happen. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that, that's how backwards it is. If you look at Moscow, this uh, circuit license was granted like 30 months ago, mm-hmm. two and a half years ago, for a permanent circuit. Nowhere near any permanent any roads that could be used. Oh yeah, it's no, just f- off in the field beside the airport. Jesus, just th- just throwing money away just because. Well, yeah, you brought up Thailand. <laughs> the outline for that is a lot like Azerbaijan. It's a lot of square corners. Yeah, yeah. It seems I, like it I barely don't fits. Really like that. They want to build what was it? The uh, they have a plan for some floating grandstands. Oh yeah, <laughs> in, in in the water. Though. <laughs> that could be cool. It could be good, front. but it it, it it could be it could get a little bit uh, a little bit woozy if it starts to if it starts to wave. Um, I think I wanna just talk for a second here about go, going back to something that, that we talked about last time. Um, Newman has and and his idea of bringing F one back to customer teams and customer. Uh, stuff like that, and I was I was thinking about the merits of doing that, and 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 if if there's actually um, a reason for it, and at the end, even though it makes sense to me, at the end I can't help but think that it's it, the drivers' world championship doesn't make money. It, 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 the teams don't get money from that. Right. The, the drivers' world championship is just for the fans, for us to cheer somebody. The money comes from what? The constructors' championship. Exactly, it's a it's a it's a Formula One um, World Constructors Championship. That means that to me, that means that whoever takes part in the World Constructors Championship has to be a constructor. If they allow too much of like bolting parts from here, borrowing parts from from uh, from Ferrari, getting a, a subcontractor to um, to design the chassis. If they become too much of a customer team, and that's the way that F1 is coming, I think I th- uh, that F1 is going. I think it's gonna lose a lot, a lot more than it can gain, because then it's just gonna end up being another spec series, uh, where the small constructors are just gonna be an extension of um, of the bigger ones. And I think that constructors sm- settle down, Danny. Settle down. <laughs> you, you calm yourself. <laughs> hey, settle down. I'm talking. <laughs> I think that the small constructors should be there. They should be there for the benefit of the fans. They should be there for the benefit of the sport. Um, I think they bring a, a sort of a flavor to it. I mean, you see, see this, this past year, for example, when Mercedes was running away with everything, we saw very interesting battles further down the pack. And it gave us something to watch. If it's, it, We knew that Mercedes was going to win, it, but if there was still a good hustle in the middle of the pack, and the, at the ball, even at the bottom of the, of the pack, you were still happy. You still had a good time in the, in, in the races. So the problem really is that these small constructors are not making enough money. Like they, why, why did they have to close down? And because the guys at the top that earned it don't want to share, and the, and that's what that's what I mean. I agree with Martin Brundle, uh, an F1 commentator and, and former driver, when he said uh, on TV that that there's plenty of money at the top, there's plenty of money at the top, and the way to really fix this problem, 
um, of the teams is is better distribution of the money. Because if you can make the smaller teams be profitable, you're gonna find even not maybe not now, but if you can make the, this being a Formula One team just just the, just being a Formula One team, if you can make mm-hmm. that profitable at the end of the year, you're gonna find young entrepreneurs. Or, or, or just different thinking entrepreneurs of all kinds of stripes coming in, trying to, trying to, trying to bring something new, trying to see what kind of approach they can bring. Or, or young engineers um, saying, well, maybe we have this innovation that we want to try out and we, or we really think that this is going to work in Formula One. And that, that is how the sport moves forward. That is how the sport attracts more people. That is, we, we were talking about Williams before, you know, mm-hmm. when, when we, we talked, yeah. um, that is how Williams started. There were, there were a small team and it was basically uh, Frank Williams with his buddy, Patrick Head, uh, mm-hmm. that was a, a very clever engineer. And they said, Hey, let's, let's make a team. Let's, let's, let, we think we can win races and maybe we don't have as much money as Ferrari or anything, but believe it, like within, within 10 years or so, they were giving those, those big name teams, a run for their money just because they were thinking differently. Yeah. If you stifle that, if you stifle uh, the the end of the pack, I think you're going to lose a lot of valuable influx in terms of talent, in terms of uh, just just raw emotion. Well, you emotions. create a higher point of entry, right? Yeah, it, it, and and it's and it's going to become a thing that only only constructors can afford. Only like say big names like Toyota and whatever can afford, and they're. It, they might not bring the same the same level of spirit to the sport, the same kind of soul, mm. and that that is something that's important to me. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I agree. That's a good point. That seems very reasonable. I agree with just about everything you said. It's amazing, <laughs> but <laughs> it's never gonna happen. It's yeah. more likely. I'm a sentimental and, fool. Well, I agree, man. Like, <laughs> but Herman Tilke is right, unfortunately, and. They're more likely to, and you made a good point. They should just change the name of the championship. Yeah. <laughs> just call it the... <laughs> at, le- at least the, be honest with us. <laughs> just call it the fastest car championship or whatever. <laughs> Nothing to do with being a constructor. All right. That's a, yeah, I don't know, man. That's Just just let's, let's take it home and chew on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. I think we can uh, wrap this up for today. Uh, let's go chew on some food. Yeah, let's go chew. Let's go get some food and beers. Hey, do you guys want to go to the Gladstone Hotel after? Uh, what, what do you sure. say? Sure. I, I got a few friends coming over, but uh, I'm sure. Did you Did down. you hear about that? That thing that's happening at the Gladstone. Uh, the, the rooms are all crazy different. Things. Yeah, there's bands playing. Now. Oh, sick. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, right. Check us out. I, We'll do it in the post. We'll do it in the post. All right. <laughs> yeah, flat, flat out, flat out fever on YouTube. Yeah, flat out fever on uh, Twitter. 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 Uh, and yeah, and then, flat out fever. we're gonna put some links at Gmail. All the music is uh, courtesy of uh, Mike and Bamboo. Bamboo. Check out his band. Uh, listen to Bamboo.com. Listen to Bamboo. Listen to Bamboo.com. Yeah. 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 Let's go. Yeah.